Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Vlog Talk, where we vlog and talk, and today is Favorite Fridays. Um, as some of you know, I usually would have Favorite Fridays, and but today is going to be Favorite Fridays. Hallelujah! So uh, for a couple of uh, two, a couple of Fridays, I've been doing Favorite Fridays, and so today is that day. Hallelujah! How many of you guys love Fridays? Hallelujah! I want you to comment down below, down in um inbox me and just let me know hey i love fridays i know i love fridays okay and today we're going to have an interesting topic hallelujah but as you know we are going to get into prayer and um before we get into prayer i just wanted to say thank you for you all who are tuning in nationally and internationally all over the world and uh it's such a privilege to serve you guys you know it's this is so not about me um most of the thing all of the things that i vlog about has been given to me to minister to you guys uh from the holy ghost so i don't ever want you to think that this is something that i'm constantly saying or i'm constantly pointing out or no i just ask you know i ask god okay what you know give me a word for the for the people today for each day and then he allows the holy spirit to minister to me the word hallelujah and so that is what the father does you know on my behalf and so i just wanted to put that out there a lot of people you know may think oh she's just constantly talking about this because she want to talk about it. no i don't if god don't uh tell me to talk about it i can't talk about it okay but on the flip side if he tells me to talk about it i have to talk about it and release it whether you want to hear it or not because that's the assignment and that's all about being obedient so i encourage you guys to do the same whatever god tells you to do and say that you would do it and say it and then if he tells you not to do it and say it then you don't do it and you don't say it all right so let's get into prayer heavenly father i come before you to say thank you hallelujah Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, I just want to thank you for providing for these individuals who are on tuning in um, on this favorite Friday, Father God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that you have indeed would tell no good thing from them. For those especially who choose to walk righteously, only for those who choose to walk righteously in you, Father. Father, I just want to thank you for giving me the, also the opportunity to minister to your precious sheep with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, Father God. Hallelujah. With no apologies attached to it. Father God, I just want to thank you, Father God, for just allowing me to be the difference in someone's life every single day that I minister. And so, Father God, I thank you for blessing the homes of the individuals that are tuning in and those who are catching the replay, Father. I thank you for the, uh, blessing the homes of those who are not uh, and will not tune in, Father. I thank you, Father God, for blessing them with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And I do shout grace, grace over their lives. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them and their families. Now, Father, as I begin to minister to your precious sheep i ask that you go up before me and of course it will be all of you and none of me father god and in jesus name i pray all is well amen amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah praise god let's just thank god and the holy spirit for just two minutes okay Rosigle <laughs> Rohogle, 
Thank you, Father. I don't know if there was quite two minutes, maybe. Oh, praise God. I pray that you all were doing that with me. And if you don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, we're going to fix that by the end of this video. Okay, so before we get into our topic, uh, of course, there's a question every other day, right? So the question reads, if someone was coming to visit your hometown, what would you recommend them to do or see? If someone was coming to my hometown, Chicago, hallelujah, which is where I reside, I would recommend them to see the downtown area, especially at night. Especially the Buckingham Fountain uh, at night, you know how it lights up different colors and things like that. I would totally recommend them to see that. And even to visit Navy Pier, um, the lights light up on the Ferris wheel and then you got the lights and the um, on the high uh, buildings, the towers and things like that. Uh, and it's just so beautiful because it's dark and it's different color, different color lighting. And it's just something that I love about different color Oh my God, different color lighting. So when I was a kid, even up until this day, uh, for Christmas, I would always love for the tree to be decorated with different color light uh, lights, okay? And so I prefer a white tree with different color lights. I don't really know why the color white instead of green, but it's just something, it's my preference, you know, to each its own. But I love the different color lights. I, it's just, I don't know about the color. I love color. Even when I'm going into the people's homes or uh, buildings and the uh, walls are orange and then you go to a nux, an, another uh, department and the walls are purple and then another department, the walls are orange and I love that. I love color. So that's what I would recommend and comment down, down below and let me know what are some of the things that you guys would recommend if someone was to visit your hometown, okay? What would you rec recommend them to do and see? All right. So today we're coming. Okay, let's rewind. Today we're going to talk about driven by lust. Driven by lust. Hallelujah. And so mm, I can definitely uh, tell you guys some things about me in my lifetime when I was driven by lust. And each time it was a disaster. My heart was broken. Uh, there was a uh, a lot of things going on, soul ties uh, that I mentioned in a previous video, I believe, that I had to end up breaking and in order to move forward and free from that thing and just, you know, walking on top of the situation, not allowing the situation to walk on top of me. Excuse me. And so that's exactly uh, what I had to end up doing each time. And so I just finally realized that being driven by lust or the flesh is not worth it to me it's not worth it sometimes in the beginning you know how you get your first mind and say oh no you shouldn't do that but then your second mind which is the enemy saying hey maybe you should give it a shot and so each time i gave it a shot that second time following that second mindset it was a complete disaster um my heart was broken and shredded into pieces it was bruised and some of everything and the lord had to nurse me back to health nurse my heart back together it was like he had to do perform surgery on my heart because i was it was so broken and shattered into pieces you know and i was so glad that god you know uh fixed my heart and glued it back together and sold it back together or whatever he did to put it back together and make it healthy and thrive again hallelujah and so um wow and then in some cases it you know, it was some cases where it felt like my heart was being ripped out of my chest. And so uh, each time that was to be that was the cause of me allowing myself to be driven by lust. And that was each and every time. OK, so that I made a decision that I was not going to be led by lust or the flesh, but that I was going to let the spirit uh, lead me, if you will. OK, and so we're coming from the book of, you know, Judges 14. And we're going to uh, talk about Judges 14 and then Judges 16, okay? And then I also want you guys to, if you feel comfortable sharing, let me know uh, some, you know, relationships or situationships or situations where you were driven by lust.
you know, whether it be greed of money or or anything. It could be anything driven by lust, you know, um, desiring. It, it could be even uh, cake, if you will, because some people, you know, obesity is big here, especially in the Chicago area. It's really, really huge here. It's a big thing. So you can uh, lust for a piece of cake or pizza, which is my favorite. I love pizza. Comment below and let me know what is um, what are some of the things that you like to eat. What's your favorite food? And so I just don't want to babble on too much about that. And so we're coming from the book of Judges 14, 1 and 3. Hallelujah. So it appears where we're going to go ahead and get started and read this. And then I'll talk about what I need to talk about afterwards. So coming from the book of Judges 14 reads, And Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. And then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou go to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. And so I just wanted to let me, uh, glory to God. Let me to do this last verse and then I'm going to talk a little bit about this story. But his mother and father knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. They had taken over Israel, and that was against the Lord's will. And so it's interesting, or interesting, because he saw a woman, knew nothing about her, that sparked up lust. When he saw that woman, lust sparked. And he said, oh, I got to have this woman. He didn't care that she was a member of the Philistines. Some of us don't care hallelujah that god did not ordain this we, we just want it because it pleases us well right we're driven by the eye of the lust hallelujah and so that's what happened to samson but his mother and father they knew that this was not of the lord and this woman was indeed fair to look upon she was fair to look upon that means she was fine or oh, or you know a coca coca-cola shape if you will you know and but hallelujah her inside was rotten hallelujah but samson like most of us did not care about that he just wanted what he saw he did not even the bible didn't even state that he even prayed about the situation he didn't pray about it or anything he began to just go after this woman and just went to his parents to say hey set this up but his parents said well why would you want an why would you want an uncircumcised woman when you rather have uh, a circumcised woman among uh, your kin, among uh, the people, among your people, not your kin, but your people. But he said, no, this is what I want. And so it's interesting, hallelujah, that this is what he wanted. And so that's exactly what happened. He ended up with this woman, but let's read on. Then, verse 5. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnoth and came to the vineyards of Timnoth. And behold, a young lion roared against him, trouble. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he had told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with this woman. And she pleased Samson well. There it is again. Pleased him well. Hmm. Hallelujah. And after a time, he returned to her to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. And came to his father and mother and gave them. And they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion so his father went down unto the woman went to the woman and samson made there a feast 
for so used the young men to do so. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when they saw him, that they, they brought 30 champions to be with him. And so what I wanted to say was, it's interesting that not only the woman was not God's will for Samson to have, he was so driven by lust that he didn't care. He just wanted this woman for she pleased him in his sight and he just had to have her or whatever the case was but notice the trouble that came with that there was no peace for he saw a young lion or uh, that was roaring and ready to attack him he had no business there hallelujah he ain't had no business being in this city of ten north ten north ten north praise god he had no business there but he didn't care because of this woman right and so what the point that I'm trying to make is, is that sometimes all the time when we're driven by lust, there is always going to be trouble and toiling that comes with that. Okay, there's always going to be heartache. There's always going to be confusion. This lion was a sign of confusion, that this was not of the Lord, that this was not the way to go. I just want you to understand that it wasn't the will of the Lord. And then his mother and father told him they knew in their spirit. It's amazing because most of the time God speaks uh, to your parents to let you know, hey, this is not it. This is not the one for you. This is not even of the Lord. And sometimes you can, because I don't want people to get caught up into, oh, well, she, he goes to church or she goes to church. I mean, that's that's good. But if they're not um, living their lies according to what they hear in church it doesn't matter they're just church goers that's all they are so i don't want you to get caught up with that hallelujah and i also don't want to get you caught up with oh well he pursued me ladies oh so samson pursued this woman but it was not the will of god so the wrong person can pursue you too you got to have wisdom and discernment hallelujah wisdom will give you discernment because you don't want to be caught up with oh he pursued me he could pursue you he very well can that does not mean that he is the one okay you just got to have, pers uh, again, wisdom to have discernment, okay? Praise God, because the counterfeit looks just like, it, it, it looks similar to the God sent, but it's, it's really not so. And that's why you really have to seek God for yourself and hear his voice and really, really let God expose the truth, and he will expose the truth, okay? He'll send the Holy Spirit that will guide you into all the truth. And so you will never not know, never not know. So it, it's interesting, again, because it says twice, um, you guys just heard me say twice that she pleased him well. And that was in verse 3. And then it said again in verse 7, she pleased Samson well. Hallelujah. But there was all so sorts of confusion with this because there was a riddle that Samson uh, had. And the men, the 30 men, couldn't figure it out. And so, just a long story short, this woman in verse 16 says, And Samson's wife wept before him because she was trying to get him to, t to tell the riddle to her so she could tell it to the Philistines so they can kill him, basically. And so, it says in verse 16, And Samson's wept. Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and love me not, that the... um." Thus had put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and had not told it to me. And he said unto him, Behold, I have not told it to my father or my mother. And shall I tell it to you? And she wept before him the seven, for seven days, while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him, she wearied him. And she told, um, and she told the riddle to the children of her people, the Philistines. And the men of the city said unto him, Hallelujah! On the seventh day, before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them. If you had plowed with my heifer and had not found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ashken, uh, Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave the change of garments unto them which expound the riddle. riddle hallelujah. And his anger was kindled. And he went up to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Did you get that? 
I didn't mean to just be reading or, you know, I just hope that you, you know, I was trying to break it down. So did you get that? So not only did the woman uh, stab him in the back, which is not literally stab him in the back, but she told the riddle to her people so that they could uh, destroy him. And when they found it out, uh, Samson had to retaliate and, you know, basically save his life. And, he, and the spirit of the Lord came up on him and he slew the 30 men. And then when all that was over, he came back. His wife, father had given him to his friend, had given her to his friend. And so she was sleeping with the, uh, back with his friend basically. And so Samson got upset and it was just a lot of, I'm not going to, you know, continue. you got to read on about the story. Um, the, the Philistines found out about it and hallelujah. I want to say, yes, the Philistines uh, found out about it. And they burned the father and the wife and his wife for what they had done. It was just a whole, you see all that confusion. She's sleeping with his friend. And before she slept with his friend, she told the riddle that he wasn't even expecting her to tell to the Philistines, her people, so that they can destroy Samson. And so Samson, again, had to retaliate, da 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 da, da. And then now the father, her, his uh, stepfather, would that be his father-in-law, not stepfather? His father-in-law gave his daughter, who was Samson's wife, to his friend. So you see all this confusion. And this, the first sign was that the parents didn't agree that this was from the Lord. Remember they said that this was not of the Lord? They might not have said that, but they knew within themselves that it was not. this was not of the Lord. And they questioned it. They questioned it. How many of you guys' as parents have ever questioned a person that you brought to the dinner table? If this was for you, if this was from the Lord. And so they questioned uh, Samson. So that was the first sign. The second sign was the, the lion that roared. Uh, roared, roared. Oh my God, roared. <laughs> roar, 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 roar. <laughs> the lion that attacked him or tried to attack him. And he killed the lion and then he kept it from his uh, family. He kept it from his mother and father, what he had done. And then the, uh, the third one, so the parents didn't agree. The lion showed up to try to kill him, but he ended up killing the lion. And then uh, he ended up telling the riddle to this woman and she backstabbed. She backstabbed him, right? Told it to her people and they tried to kill him. So he ended up uh, killing them, 30 men. And then she slept with his best friend. So that's four things. She slept with his friend. So that was four things right there. Confirmation back to back that this is not the one. God will always give you confirmation that it is or it isn't back to back. Okay, so all this was just not of the Lord. All because he was driven by lust. What did he say twice? For she pleased me. She pleased me well. Oh my goodness. So then when all of that was over, verse 16, right? It says, Samson, he was in this place, in this city, and he was in the city of uh, Gazar. And then I'm going to read it. Um, it says that then went Samson to Gazar and saw there an heartlet and went in, uh, and went in unto her. And it was told that the Gazites saying, Samson is come Hitler. He's coming. He's in our town. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all night saying in the morning when it is day we will kill him he ain't had no business there once again and samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them bar and all and went and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before hebron and it came, to, <clears throat> excuse me, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. And the whole, and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lie. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, we'll give you, if you do this for us, told Delilah, that we will give you, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lie, and wherewith thou might be bound to afflict thee. 
So I'm not going to read all of this, but at first he told her that Samson said unto her, If thou buy me with seven green wits that were never dry, then I shall be weak and be as another man. And so that was a lie. So he told her all types of lies. I'm not going to get all into that. But then uh, Delilah cried. Oh, I want to say that she cried. Let me see. She knew that he was lying to her and, you know, Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therein with them unto Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him wherewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. And there were lies and wait, a body in the chamber, and he brake them off of his arms like a thread. And then Sam it says, And Delilah said unto Samson, Here uh here the the mock me. So anyway, um, Delilah just kept asking him, "Where, where? Basically saying, where's your great, uh, your great strength? Where does it lie?" And so he told her a whole bunch of lies, and so she told it to them, and then they, you know, she went to basically do it herself. So she, he said, "Okay, well, if you buy me with these green dry leaves or whatever, if you buy me with this, uh." Hallelujah. If you buy me with seven green uh, wits um, that has never been dried, then will my strength be taken? But then it says, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, because he finally told the truth. But it says before he told her the truth that he told her all his heart. Da, 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 da. Oh, my goodness. She pressed him. Okay, la da 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 da. She said unto him. She said, okay, so before he told her the truth, it's interesting after he told her a lie. Because verse uh, 15 says, and she said unto him, How can thou say I love you when thou heart is not with me? So she was questioning the fact if he loved her or not. Didn't the other lady do that too? The one that he actually married. Hallelujah. The one that he actually married, she cried too and said that you didn't love um you didn't love me. So she went to sleep with his uh friend. And then Delilah is saying the same thing. How could you tell me that you love me and when you don't you won't even tell me where your great strength will lie? And so when Samson was pressed, hallelujah, when she when he pressed her, I'm sorry, when when she pressed him and kept coming to him and asking him, the Bible says that, uh, and it came to pass, verse 16, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Oh, my goodness. So she really pressed him, and then he told her all his heart. That means he told her the truth. And then he told her that if one, that a razor had never been touched on my head. So if uh, a razor was to touch my head and you shave my hair then i will lose my strength hallelujah and do you know what happened she told the philistines and they put the razor to his head and shaved his head the philistines came and they got him and they shaved his head and he lost his great strength and they blinded him they put his eyes out they they did they put his eyes out they left him shaved his head put his eyes out and tied him down all of that good stuff right and this woman, uh, the Bible says that Delilah also was fair to look up on. She was fair to look up on, if I'm not mistaken, because um, you can go back and read all of that. But anyway, she had his head shaved. She stabbed him in the back, which is a figure of speech. And so she had his head shaved. And the Bible says also they put his eyes out. Oh, my God. Um, that was verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gazar and bound him with, feather, with fetters and brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Oh, my goodness. Did you get that? They put out his eyes and shaved his head. So he was in the worst situation that he was in before, all because he was driven by lust. Tell me now, how many things have you uh, been faced with, all because you were driven by lust? Because I can testify to some things. Okay? What have you lost? This man lost his sight and his hair and his strength. And then in the end, hallelujah, in the end, praise God. Mm -mm -mm. In the end, uh, God granted the wish of Samson because God will uh, make a way for you to escape, right? 
And so, when the king sent for Samson, hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. And it says, verse 28, so God granted the, the wish of Samson. Because Samson said, verse 28 of 17, that, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord, remember me, I pray thee. Strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. O Lord, O God, that I, that I may, hallelujah, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. So he basically wanted some he wanted some revenge but there is a saying he said that he will avenge for his two eyes so basically he wanted to get revenge for what they did to his eyes and you ever heard someone say that when you want revenge he said avenge but he wanted to get back at them for what he did basically that's what he was saying to god and when that's called revenge and so when you want revenge have you ever heard someone say that to lay two graves lay one for your enemy and one for yourself i'm going to explain why because that's exactly oh well let's uh let's go ahead and get into it so verse what was 28 hallelujah and so verse 29 says and samson took two and samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon the house uh stood and on which was born up and the one with his right hand and the other with his left hand so i'm trying to make sure that that was the king that sent forth Yeah, so they shaved off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and, and his strength went out of him. And so I want to say that some they sent for uh, Samson. I'm not gonna. You gotta read this whole thing. So they basically sent for for Samson to come back from the prison house into uh, this party that they were having into uh, in this um, particular building. And so um, Samson uh, asked God to just grant his request this one time. And so he took one pillar in the right hand and one pillar in the left hand. And so he took those pillars and he uh, he grabbed hold of them and he uh, took them apart. And that caused the building to collapse, killing 3,000 men, which is including himself, which is the mo most men he ever killed in his life. And so that's basically how that story ended. And then his mother and father uh, came up to Gazar and they came up to bury him, to get his body and bury him. And that's basically how that story ended with Samson. Oh my goodness. This, has, this thing got out of hand. So not only did Delilah tell the Philistines to shave his seven locks after she pressed him to tell her the truth so she can uh, tell them so that they can give her how many pieces of gold? A hundred pe 11 pieces of gold uh, a piece from each man. So she was thinking about being wealthy and getting all that she wanted out of him. Out she was just thinking about herself, basically. And she didn't care nothing about him. But had a nerve to question if he cared about her because he wouldn't tell her where his great strength would lie. Trying to take his strength because, you know, oh my goodness, it was just a mess. And so how many of you know some people who have died because of being driven by lust? Hallelujah. Or if you were on the verge of losing your own life, just like Samson actually uh, lost his life because of being driven by lust. It's not worth it. And I am, like I said, I just come to a, a, a place, hallelujah, that I am free from, from uh, sexual immorality. Hallelujah. And, and, and even um, being free from eating junk food, which I, God is dealing with me about, you know, uh, especially during this quarantine time because I do not want to be a certain size, okay? And just, this is not just about sexual, immor you know, being driven by sexual immorality. Hallelujah, but dr being driven by, you know, just wanting to be with someone, don't be so caught up with that, you know, just uh, being driven by the flesh, if it's a, cu a cupcake, you lusting for a donut, uh, if it's money, you being greed by money, you, you know, lusting out the money, which is the lust of money is the root of all evil, it tells us that if you're lusting out of it, after, if you're lusting after anything, it is not the will of God, it, it can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a thing. It does not matter. It's not worth it because, and check out Samson. It was not worth it. Hallelujah. It was not worth it. It was not worth it. 
it wasn't worth it. And so, um, a scripture reads that my words have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. So if Samson had a hid the word of God in his heart, he would have never lusted after the first woman to wife. Okay, he would would have never um, lusted after Delilah, who had him his ass put out in his seven lock shades. And then ultimately, he was destroyed. He didn't even care because he said, I can't see, you know, my head, I lost my strength. And I just ask you to give me, Lord, the strength one more time and, you know, just revenge for my two ass and I'll die with them. He even said that. And so God granted his request. He killed the 3,000 men and himself. This and that something, how lust can take you from one situation to another situation because it's only going to get worse and worse. It was bad for the first situation after the woman that he lost. But it got worse with Delilah. That, that, that situation got even worse. Hallelujah. It just wasn't worth it. And so I just pray that it was something said that um, was life changing to you guys. And I'm so glad that God brought me to a place, especially when it comes to, uh, in a, you know, a relationship or whatever have you, um, that I would hide the word in my heart that I would never again sin against the Father because it is the Spirit of the Lord that uh, sustains my infirmity, infirmities. And that's just saying that it is God that sustains you. You don't sustain yourself. But in order for God to sustain you, you got to be responsible and take the word and hide it in your heart so you won't be lusting in your heart for anything, okay? So I just pray that it was something said um, that leaked in your womb and that was life changing to you or maybe life changing to someone you know and so that's pretty much it in regards to that story it was called driven by lust which is was the theme for today on his favorite favorite friday all right so um if you want to be delivered from lust of anything, from cake, from a person, people, uh, places and things, then you have to first do the, take the first initiative step, which is getting in the kingdom, okay? And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and ask my famous Amos question. If the world would end today, would you be going to heaven or to hell? Okay, so if the answer is no, I don't know, just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I believe Jesus died and rose the third day. Hallelujah, you are saved, and I'm going to go ahead and speak to your minds. Minds be transferred, geared up your loins. You are kingdom-minded. You are, you will, you will remember and understand that you are circumcised. Hallelujah, I circumcised you. I purged you from all negative thinking, all thinking that is of the world and of the flesh. Hallelujah, I purged you in the name of Jesus with the word of God, and I declare that you have geared up your loins. In the name of Jesus, you are kingdom-minded. Never will you ever think now that you are circumcised. Hallelujah. Never will you think to act like the world. In the name of Jesus, behold. Hallelujah. Peace be still in you. So just receive that, hallelujah, by faith. So you are now saved and sanctified. Hallelujah. And so now I want to encourage you to go in your Bibles and uh, find out more about what all God has delivered you from. Hallelujah. And, and find out who you are in Christ and what you have a right to. Hallelujah. And go ahead and thank God for his promises and his finished works. Hallelujah. And um, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to change your speech and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. That's all I got for today, guys. I'm going to get, go ahead and pray and <clears throat> talk a little bit about other things. And that's it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this vlog. Hallelujah. Um, this was definitely like changing for me hallelujah i thank you that it was something said that was life-changing and beneficial to these individuals that are tuning in all over the world hallelujah god i thank you once again for using me to deliver the word with excellence accuracy and boldness father i just want to thank you father god father hallelujah it is well it is well and i thank you that we are delivered and set free from being lust from we are delivered and set free from lust god of any and everything and this i thank you that it is well hallelujah in jesus name because who the son sets free is free indeed in jesus name amen hallelujah that's all i got for today guys if 
uh, there was something that was said that was life-changing to you I want you to go ahead and send me a love donation which is optional and my cash app info is the money sign Latoya L-A-T-O-Y-A 090 Latoya um, the money sign Latoya L-A-T-O-Y-A 090 and that's it that's all I got for today guys thank you so much for tuning in to my channel don't forget to like share comment and subscribe okay if this message is of about a value to someone you know go ahead and forward this video to them share 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 and share all right guys that's all i got for today thank you so much for tuning in to favorite fridays on vlog talk where we vlog and talk